okay and uh, we have patients who come in with like severe anemia who need a transfusion and uh, some people just argue that only my blood relatives have the best like match for me and nobody else is so is there something like the their own relatives is the best blood and we cannot like the others is less compatible or something like that um yeah before i just go to that question one of the cri other criteria that we need to mention is if you had a transfusion then you should defer for a whole year that is the other thing that if you had a surgery you received transfusion for some reason then you should defer yourself for a whole year um your question about what if relatives come and say i want so and so's blood my son's blood my mother's blood uh, the thing is that we generally tend to avoid for uh, people donating and transfusing first degree relatives blood so mother to son father to son father to daughter daughter to father uh, these are generally discouraged and that's because there is a condition called graft versus host disease that can be fatal to the uh, to the person who's receiving the blood so if a, a son donates for the father what happens is that we all know that uh, genetically there is an inherited aspect called the hla the human leukocyte antigen which is present on uh, many of the nucleated cells and they help in recognizing self and non self so because we are taking from a father and son some of them might be fully matched rarely or they can be uh, at least a haplo match because each parent provides half uh, uh, 50% of the hla uh, so in that case what happens is that uh, Uh, in these kind of situations the lymphocytes from the donor's blood can go and engraft into the recipient because they're not fully exploded out because of this partial recognition business and that can harm the recipient uh, so the donor's lymphocytes actually mounts a reaction against the recipient against the patient who receives the blood so if it is the son's blood which has gone into the father or uh, it can then potentially be that the son's blood uh, lymphocytes go and engraft inside the recipient the father and then mount a very major reaction which we call a graft versus host disease and uh, usually this can be uh, it this is fatal this kind of a transfusion associated graft versus host disease is fatal because by the time the problem is realized and appropriate measures are taken it is too late for the recipient because of the widespread damage to the epithelial and reproductive cells so the reproducing cells uh, so the way to avoid it is to irradiate the the bag of red cells so that all the lymphocytes are irradiated and inactivated but blood irradiation is not possible everywhere there are it's an expensive equipment it is found only in certain blood centers where they have transplant going on so usually it's not easy and possible so as a rule we avoid this the second reason is even if there's no graft versus host disease there is a possibility of sensitization so you develop antibodies against the hla or other antigens which are new to that particular recipient and in future if you want to consider them for a kidney transplant or a, a any other organ transplant then we can end up having complications the organ will get rejected because of antibodies which have formed earlier john you want to pitch in and add anything more to this um <clears throat> uh, so uh, for um, another thing which i would like to emphasize here is a husband donating for a wife so that's a very dangerous uh, kind of a situation because uh, that can uh, affect the Uh, during the childbirth because uh, the child is going to be a representative of both the father and the mother so if a husband is donating for the wife and uh, at that particular point of time during childbirth there might be certain antibodies which might be developed which can go and attack the uh, baby so uh, that's another thing when it comes to spousal uh, tra uh, transmissions it, it's much dangerous and it should be avoided uh, Uh, as much as possible it should not it should never happen and has been donating for a wife in addition to uh, relatives donating within their own family because they all share the same hla and it, that can cause a reaction so just to summarize first degree relatives can't donate and the spouse can't donate but otherwise it doesn't matter the whose blood you are getting because the blood bank will do all the necessary tests cross match your blood and only then give it to you yeah yes yeah 
So actually, these are real life problems, you know. Um, uh, I've known a situation where uh, the mother needed the surgery, uh, the son was asked to donate blood, the blood was stored. Um, and then at the end of the surgery, actually the hemoglobin was all right. There was really no clinical indication for transfusion, but uh, there was some pressure on the clinician saying that, no, I donated my blood. It is for my mother, please transfuse. And this happened in a smaller hospital in the Southern part of our country. And the transfusion did take place. And finally, the lady died because of DAGVHD, transfusion associated graft research. It's about 14 years ago, 15 years ago that this happened. So it is a real problem. And often the sentiment of uh, it's my mother, it's my blood, or it's my son and it's my blood, please give it. And now that you've collected it, don't throw it away kind of thing. So uh, patients have certain uh, sentiment attached to it, but it should be explained that number one, if there is no need for the transfusion, there should not have been a transfusion at all if there was no clear indication. And the second thing is, uh, let's not transfuse because of sentiment, because every transfusion is associated with risk. So the less you transfuse, the less risk you expose our patients to.